Hey YouTube, Brian LCS. Thanks for stopping by the channel and this video, Spider-Man number eight review. So let's take a look at the synopsis here in the front cover and we're going to get into spoilers. So uh, if you don't want to be spoiled, you may want to tune away and come back after you've read the issue. If not, let's go ahead. So this is maxed out part one, clear and present dangers. Peter Parker and his spider allies across the Spider-Verse have defeated the ancient wasp totem, Sathra, and restored the web of life and destiny. During the conflict, Sathra erased Peter and several other spiders from their realities. Peter's severance from the web yielded an alternate timeline and the history that replaced the original where Peter was never bitten by a radioactive spider and even saved his Uncle Ben from a violent robber. But when the web was rewoven, the events of Peter's original life were restored along with all of the previous array spiders and their timelines, including the spectacular Spider-Boy, who seems to be the only one who remembers he ever existed in the Marvel Universe. Meanwhile, Peter Parker has returned to the streets of New York City as the Amazing Spider-Man. So let's jump in. And so we get right off the, you know, the first page of the story. Uh, Spider-Man is out saving some people from a burning building and we see he's able to use his spider sense and get out of the building just before a big explosion happens and he's talking with um ny uh, fdn um and <clears throat> you know they, they find out they basically peter spider-man realizes that there's still people in the building and he needs to go back in and then we see this kind of splash page montage where he's obviously saving a lot of different people and animals and, and children. And he gets out and now he's being attended uh, with some oxygen. Uh, and one of the paramedics says, hey, you know, you, we should probably check you for your burns. And he's like, no, don't worry about it. I'm okay. And one of the, the chief firefighters is, is talking to him and just saying, you know, he did, su he did such a great job. Really appreciate it. But then we see this woman come up and we actually see a, a body being removed from the building. And so there was somebody who was missed. And so we see a woman come up and saying that this was my husband and kind of yelling at Spider-Man saying, you know, you're a superhero. You saved all these other people. Why couldn't you save him? <clears throat> you know, that kind of weighs heavily on him a little bit. Uh, and they kind of usher the woman away with some friends and the chief and Spider-Man continue to talk. And you know, the chief is relaying some information. That he's lived through that, you know, that you know, sometimes they just, you can't do everything and sometimes you know if these things happen as as much of a effort that you put into things uh and he's actually the chief actually kind of like says hey you want to go you know grab a beer and spider-man is gone he swings off and so we see him get home he showers and hits the bed from a from a very busy you know superhero day uh, and then we see him dreaming and he's he's flashbacking to just this you know, this story arc where, or the past story arc where, you know, he was in an alternative life where he wasn't Spider-Man. He was really focused on his science. Uncle Ben was alive. Uh, and, you know, and it, it seems like a happy time. And then we see this fire and screaming. And then Peter wakes up from his dream. And he's just, he's upset by it. He rips, rips his uh, spider costume. I didn't use my great power. And Uncle Ben died. I use it every day and I still can't save everyone. And so he, he's he's conflicted here and he says, I need to figure out a way to improve that. And so we see the Oscorp badge. And then we cut to uh, Max Dillon and uh, an associate. And they're talking about a robbery. And then Max Dillon mentions that, hey, I don't go by Max Dillon anymore. I'm Electro. And so this buddy of his says, hey, look, I've got this easy, you know, robbery with some high end uh, people with a lot of money. They're installing a new uh, alarm system or security system that's all run on electric. You can short it out and it would be easy, easy taking. And so Electro shakes his hand and electrocutes his buddy here and says, wow, that's a great plan and, and kind of walks off. And now we cut to Oscorp, and uh, Norman is here, and he's walking into the building. He's, he heard, you know, he got some alert that something's going on in one of his labs, and there's a lot of power being used. 
and he walks by this little uh, table here with all these little spiders, and they form in the word, and they say, hi, boss, and he's a little confused by it, and then he runs into Peter, and he sees that Peter's working on some, uh, you know, experiment here, and Peter mentions that those spiders were, you know, from another dimension, and that they're all physically linked together, and that's why they uh, said, hi, boss, because in their dimension, they, Norman Osborn was their boss, and so Peter does a little uh, experiment here, or a little example with Norman saying, look how they, you know, react all together because they're linked. And Peter tells Norman, look, I'm trying to tap into my spider sense. You know, I want, I want that kind of power where, uh, you know, I can um, predict danger, you know, before it happens, even on a wider scale, not only for myself. And Norman just says, hey, look, this is the kind of meddling that got me into going down the road of the Green Goblin. We're not, I'm really not sure you want to tackle this. And then Peter says to him, as the Goblin, you came up with all kinds of weapons that could shut, shut off my spider sense. No one else besides us, the two of us in the room, have studied the ph phenomenon more. Come on, Osborne, work with me. Let's put that old Goblin knowledge to yours to good use. Then we cut to Spider Boy. And we see him swinging through the you know city, New York City, and we see that he he mentioned that he's like connected. He's getting vibes, you know, from Peter Parker, and so and he's actually seeing some of these you know kind of flashbacks of Peter saving people in the in the fire. So I don't know if he's linked to him somehow, but it obviously seems like they're sharing memories or spider sense or something's happening here with Spider Boy. We're not fully clear on what's going on. But he does mention, he says, Peter Parker's about to do something monumentally stupid and reckless. And it's going to be up to me to fix it again. And so there's obviously some backstory that hasn't been revealed yet with Spider-Boy, where he's come from. And he's mentioned it before in his first appearance where he mentioned you know, that he had worked with Peter Parker and Miles Morales. So we'll see where this goes. So then we cut back to Oscorp and Norman and Peter are working together. And like I said, they're trying to kind of amplify Peter's uh, spider sense to be able to predict danger for other people. And so their little experiment seems to work because Peter, um, Spider-Man jumps up and says, I can sense uh, people's danger nearby. And he swings off. And then we see a series of danger accidents happening and Spider-Man being there to be able to save people before they, you know, they get hurt or injured or killed. So we a couple different scenarios, somebody falling off a building, someone almost getting hit on their bicycle, somebody eating a hot dog, assuming that they're going to choke on that, a woman walking over a, a grate. So all different kinds of scenarios that he's able to now sense and predict before they happen. And then we see him make a call to, uh, in his, uh, Spider suit make a call to Aunt May, and they're planning a you know dinner date where Peter's coming over to Aunt May's house to have dinner, and they're inviting a bunch of the you know their friends to join him. So, uh, and then we see that he's saved a helicopter from crashing into the city street below. So obviously his spider sense is really amped up now, and he's able to predict and kind of feel all of these danger events before they happen. And then we cut, cut back to Electro, and he is now following up on that uh, security system and, and basically going to pull up, you know, a robbery here. And so he taps into the, the electrical grid and begins to draw the power. And we see that has kind of a ripple effect throughout the city. So we hear and see now some transformers and some wires being broken, and we see Spider-Man swing in and knock two workers to the side. But then Spider-Man gets hit by one of the live electrical wires and is shocked. And then again, we cut back to Spider-Boy, and now he feels the effects of that. And so there's some type of link between the two. And then we see Norman trying to um, contact Peter because there's a communication in his new suit. And then we see that Spider-Man, Peter, is, is his spider sense is basically going haywire now. All of these... Um, you know, senses and, and communication are kind of flooding into him. And then we see it's here that it's coming from everywhere and everyone in the city and basically over, overwhelming him and his brain. 
And that's where we leave off. It's to be continued. And we see, you know, that we're, we're getting, you know, next issue looks like we're going to get a showdown between Electro and Spider-Man. And that is in June. So that is the overview of Spider-Man number eight. I really thought this was a great, great issue. I guess it's just the, the old Spider-Man fan in, in, in me. It is, it's just kind of a classic story, right? We're back to the basics with him. He's dealing with, uh, you know, great power. But, you know, with great power comes great responsibility. We've got a classic villain, Electro, in the mix here. You know, he's continuing to work with Norman. Uh, but this just felt like a, you know, straightforward story. Uh, you know, a straightforward Spider-Man story. I really enjoyed it, right? We have some wrinkles there. We've got Electro up to something. We've got Spider-Boy. We don't know what's going on with him. He's still working with Norman. But again, just the, the classic elements of the struggle that Peter Parker always has with his powers, trying to be responsible, trying to save everybody, and some of the loss that he's had over his, you know, his life. And so I'm going to go my review system Five web heads being the best, one being the worst. I'm going to go with a solid four. I was really excited what, to see what Dan Slott was going to do with this ongoing Spider-Man series now that we we got through the whole end, end of Spider-Verse storyline with all the different Spider characters. Just getting back to the basics here, and that's what I really enjoy about this story, and that's what I was hoping was going to happen once we got past that, that first storyline. So really lived up to my expectations. And now I'm just hopeful that this will continue forward. I don't know how that is going to be in the uh, tie-in to The Amazing Spider-Man, but only, only time will tell. So let me know what you think down in the comments. Are you reading this? What, do you, what did you think of this issue? Uh, if not, what did you think of the review? Let me know. Appreciate you guys watching. Thanks for stopping by, and we'll see you for the next review.